Hey card making friends, it's Sandy here and welcome back to my channel. Today I am playing with the Alex Siberia's special delivery and I've got four handmade cards for you. This set includes a die, some stencils and this beautiful stamp set and I'm going to be using some of my distressed oxide inks and uh, in some of these colors that I have shared in previous posts. So first off what we're going to do is we're going to cut out four of the panels that look like stamps. We're going to make four cards today and you'll see by overlapping them with the stencil we're going to be able to add some beautiful ink blending to them. I'm going to be using the Waffle Flower 6.5 by 8.5 grip mat to hold everything in place and putting it down on my glass mat and I'm adding one of the stamp panels to the center along with the stencil over top. For the first card we're going to be using Crack Pistachio, Peacock Feathers and Prize Ribbon and I'm using the blending tools and we're going to add three colors to each of the panels. So starting in the bottom, I'm going on the right hand side there. At the bottom, I'm adding the darkest color, which is the prize ribbon. And I find that it's easier to lay down two separate layers of the colors that you get a better blend with them. And obviously I've sped this up because it does take a while to blend all these colors together. Moving on to the peacock feathers, and that's my middle color. And I'm kind of, I'm splitting the panels in half. The first two colors are going to be in the bottom half, and then the third color, the uh, cracked pistachio, is the top half. And I'm doing this on purpose because the stamps are all silhouettes, and I'm going to be stamping them in black. And I just kind of like the way it lays out with these three colors in that combination. So you notice that I've turned my panel around. I find it easier to work with the edge of my blending tool from the top and then I'm making sure that I'm getting into the corners of the stencil as well. And then when I get to the green I'm flipping it back around again and adding the second layer of that color and then that way they're nicely blended together. Looks lovely. So before you take this off, use your rag and wipe off all of the ink and then that way you're not worrying about contaminating the next project was going to be in different colors. Okay, removing the panel from the grip mat and we want to heat set this and I eventually come in here with my heat tool. Either leave it and let it sit to dry or if you're in a hurry like I always am, then use your heat tool and dry it. And then I've got it in the misty. Um, I am using magnets at this point in time, then I decide that the magnets are in the way and so I got the uh, sticky mats that also come from the Misty and My Sweet Petunia and those will hold the panels in place without you having to use any of the magnets. So as you can see I am choosing some of the stamps that I want to use and trying to position my magnets closing the lid to get the stamps on the lid and then I'm using my favorite black ink. This is VersaFine Claire Nocturne Black Ink. And this is the blackest ink you're ever ever going to find. The ink pad is always nice and juicy and you usually only have to stamp once for silhouette stamps which is kind of unheard of. Uh, I would su strongly suggest that when you order one, order the refill as well. Um, I use this ink all the time and I like to keep it very very nice and juicy because look at what you get with just one stamping. It's beautiful. Okay, I'm going to put it back down because I want to add a couple of the little uh, scent, one cent and seven cent and the cancelled stamp. Okay, we're off to card number two. We're going to use festive berries, pickled raspberry and spiced marmalade. And as you can see, I'm doing a bit of a different ink blend. I'm going across on an angle with the colors and running right through all of the stamps, keeping the color going all the way through, kind of like an Aurora Borealis is kind of where I got the idea from. Uh, we've had the Northern Lights for the last couple of nights and it was just kind of, woo, I could do that on a card. And I have the stencil in place so that I still have the white lines around so it looks like a stamp when it's all finished because this looks kind of crazy while you're working on it. And again, you want to go back and do your second colors and I'm also just using one half of the blending brush so I have it tipped so that the sponge is only hitting with like half of the circle. That's how I'm getting it so skinny. And you'll see I'm going back and forth over the colors to darken them and to blend them up a little bit. There we go. 
time to stamp and this time I'm using the outline stamps there's a rose and there's uh, some flowers there's a cancel stamp and there's a nice round one and I've got the one cent and the seven cent and I'm able to stamp them all at once on this panel there we go okay number three we are going to do separate colors for each panel so this time I'm going to mask off everything but one panel and I've already got my stencil down there as well so I'm still going to have my white edges and each color is going to have its own square so wilted violet evergreen bow peacock feathers and prize ribbon and what I'm doing is I'm adding a little bit of darker color down at the bottom and the side of each one so flipping to the this one is what peacock feather and so basically you're going to lightly put the color down through the whole uh, rectangle I was gonna say square it's not a square <laughs> and then a separate second layer just at the bottom just to add that little bit of extra shadow and be careful with the purple it likes to grab on and we're repeating this on three and four just moving my mask those are uh, post-it notes okay and the fourth color is obviously the evergreen bow and what we're going to do with these is we are going to stamp them and we're going to cut them apart so you want to get your paper trimmer out and if you're very careful and line it up you can go right down the middle of the circles and all four edges will look exactly the same this is really cool about this die and so i'm stamping each one of these as you can see i've got kind of a different theme going on in each panel and stamping off the edges with a few of the pieces as well and using my little oh, I'm adding the cancelled stamp again and one of the little one centers for the fourth cord you're going to put the panel into your misty you're going to add the special delivery stencil over top of it then you're going to take the large tulip from the tulip treasure stamp and stencil load that into your misty okay uh, use your anti-static tool on the paper obviously we're going to heat emboss Versamark up your stamp get it good and sticky get the white embossing powder ready stamp the image this is so cool this one turned out really really cool I can't wait to see for you to see it okay peel all that stuff back add your embossing powder shake off any of the excess and we're going to heat set this okay so we're going to do a embossed resist technique on this one but it's also going to be through the stamp stencil okay so the colors spun sugar kirsch flamingo scattered straw and cracked pistachio we are starting with spun sugar and we're going around the outside of the flower to add a nice light pink background if you get into the flower a little bit don't worry about it too much because it, I'm using the same color as the base color there uh, try and stay away from the leaves though because we're going with a light green and I'm really not quite sure what color pink and green make I might have to look that up anyway work your way around it um, I'm working on my grip mat which is nice I have um, I have the grid panel on the back of mine so that it doesn't stick to my glass mat but the top is sticky and it holds everything in place for me so I can keep turning my mat but all of my paper and my stencils all stay in place it's a great tool for doing this kind of work okay so I think I'm ready to go we are going to get the tulip treasure stamp stencil out and we're using stencil number one and that's the big one so we're going to do all the background colors okay so I'm going to use my blending tools for this and starting with a little bit of the cursed flamingo I'm very very lightly adding some to the background of the flower I'm leaving the tips because I want them to have a little bit of yellow so that's where the scattered straw is going to come in and I'm putting down my first layer of cracked pistachio on the leaves okay so now I'm adding the yellow to the flower just around the tips and a little bit more green okay I'm pulling that stencil off we're going to use stencil number two they're numbered in the top left hand corner that way you know which way's up as well two and three are the smaller detail stencils so what I'm doing right now is I'm cleaning some of my smaller brushes to get into these little spots so I'm adding the second layer of cursed flamingo to the uh, 
flower portion with this small tiny brush and then once I finish that I'm changing over to a small brush for the yellow and adding the second layer so it adds the highlights to the flower okay going back in and blending the pink a little bit and the yellow a little bit just use both the brushes and blend them back and forth I have a dark green on my green brush so I'm just trying to clean that off and then we're going to add the first layer of the cracked pistachio to the leaves and again, this is a little bit of detail. Okay, we're finished with stencil number two, and we're going to bring in stencil number three, which is even smaller highlights. We're going to use exactly the same colors because by adding the third layer of the color, it makes it appear darker, uh, but it isn't. It's just the same ink. So you know that it's going to match and it's going to look beautiful when it's finished. And I have purposely stayed with the lighter colors because I really want a soft, subtle feel to this card. Okay, so coming back in with the yellow and adding the highlights and then adding a little bit more of the Cursed Flamingo Pink. Okay, and then after I remove this, I go back in with the sponge sugar and there are a couple of places on the background that need a little bit of attention. They're not quite dark enough. And then without re-inking, I also go over the pink portion of the flower uh, with this blending tool and it helps to blend that pink together just a little bit. Don't get too carried away or it'll cover up your cursed flamingo. But you just want to lightly blend that together. Isn't that pretty? I love it. Okay, now we're going to move it into the Misty and I've added some of the cancellation stamps and a couple of the little one and seven cents and a sentiment down the right hand corner. And that's all I'm going to do with this because I want that flower to shine. Just cleaning my, oh, I'm going to add one more stamp for uh, the scents in the, I think the top left hand corner. Yep. There's only two of the little scent stamps, so you kind of have to do a second go at them. This one's really pretty. Okay, so here's my four cards finished. Uh, for the black one, I'm using the Thank You and Hello dies also with this release. And there's a black background. And the rest of the three cards, I have used the Good Day Quilting Rectangles die set to die cut the card fronts. And it's got a nice little line, um, kind of a frame image that looks really nice behind all of these stamp images. And for the Fana one, I didn't do anything. I just put it on a pink border. Again, with the Quilted Rectangle die set. So there you go. There's everything that uh, I have used today and a written tutorial is over on my blog where you can get all the cutting instructions and a list of the supplies that I used. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider giving me a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends. And I've added a couple of more videos here that I thought you might enjoy.